Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video I'm going to be explaining to you guys how to use the bus in China. More specifically I'm going to be focusing on how to take the bus in Suzhou but um, the way to use the bus is more or less the same throughout all of China so if there's some other place you're going to be traveling in China this video will also be helpful for you. So the first thing that you should know when you take the bus in China is which bus do you need to take to get where you want to go. Um, so usually you would check the stops at a bus sign. However, in China these are all in Chinese and in Chinese characters. So um, even if you learn the Chinese language, a lot of the time the Chinese characters of uh, place names is still something that's it's kind of hard to learn so in my opinion it's not very helpful unless you're really fluent in Chinese. However, the bus signs are not completely useless. First of all you can see which buses stop there and second of all you can see what time the buses start driving and what time they stop driving and this differs uh, for each bus so this sign can really help you like see these things and that's what I always used it for. So what I always did is I used my iPhone and used Apple Maps to search which bus I needed to take from A to B. I would just type in from where I wanted to depart and where I wanted to go to and then Apple Maps would tell me which bus um, I could take, how long the ride was and how much uh, the bus would cost. Now if you don't have an iPhone, which a lot of people don't, um, you're going to have a harder time because in China you're going to need a VPN to use Google Maps and a lot of the time um, whilst using the VPN on uh, Google Maps it's extremely slow and when you turn the VPN off uh, you're unable to use Google Maps so yeah it's, it's more of a struggle if you don't have an iPhone. In my experience when using Google Maps the, the uh, recommended buses and routes are less um, accurate than when you use Apple Maps. So when you figure out which bus you need to take, you go to the bus station. And there I just always wait. I, I always waited for the bus to come. Um, because there's no time indication of when the bus is going to arrive. I just sat there and waited for the bus to arrive. And this never really took longer than 10 minutes. Um, because usually the buses arrive every 10 minutes. So if you just miss the bus, you're going to have to wait 10 minutes. And I believe Apple Maps also uh, showed us how often the bus went. So it will tell you this bus leaves every 10 minutes or this bus leaves every 15 minutes. Um, so just go to the bus station and wait for the bus to arrive. Then when the bus arrives, you need to check in or pay for the bus ride. So if you're a student at XJTLU, you get a student card. The student card you get at XJTLU looks like this. So what you do is you use the card and check into the bus. So where I live in Europe, you need to check into the bus and then check out again when you leave. Because what you pay for the bus is based on your destination. So the longer you're in the bus, the more you pay. But in China, this is not the case. You only check into the bus and that's it. And the bus always costs the same. It doesn't matter if you leave the next stop or you leave the last stop, it always costs 2 yen for everyone. Now with your student card, um, you get 50% discount, so with your student card it only costs 1 yen um, per ride. So it doesn't matter if you leave the first stop or you leave the last stop, it's always the same price. Now if you do not have a student card because you're not a student uh, in China, you can just pay with coins and they just have a coin machine in which you can drop the money and you just uh, drop in 2 yen so even if you're a student you need to pay 2 yen because uh, you don't have a student card so then you just need to pay the full uh, price but if you are a student I strongly recommend that you use your student card because this card can not only be used for buses but it can also be used to pay um, taxis or the metro or you can even use it to pay for your electricity and water in your um, dorms 
I've never tried to pay for electricity and water with this card, but it says on the back that you can. And I, I, know, I know people that have, I've just never done it before, I just only use it for public transportation. So when you're on the bus, I always check my phone to see approximately where I was, to see where I would need to get out, because um, otherwise I, I wouldn't know where I would need to get out. And if you're in a really, really full bus, which happens sometimes, if you guys remember the vlog where I went to the Forbidden City, afterwards we took the bus um, back to the hotel or something, but it was so unbelievably crowded. We have now found ourselves in the most crowded bus we have ever seen so far. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. So, sometimes um, the, the buses can be rather full. Not this full, but even if it's slightly full, I recommend that you start proceeding towards the back door if you want to leave soon because in China the buses stop at the stop and let you out and close the door at a very fast pace. They do not like wait a lot of time for you. I've experienced multiple times that even Chinese they, they are trying to leave the bus but the bus driver um, has already closed the door so they start shouting at the bus driver that they want to leave so they open the door again and so even the Chinese they they try to uh, proceed to to the door um, before their stop so they don't need to deal with not making out of the bus sometime. So lastly if you want to use a student car to use a public transportation there are a few things that you need to know. First of all, if you have an XGTLU student card, and I'm assuming that this is the same thing for any other student cards in, in uh, China, or at least Suzhou, this XGTLU student card is only valid in the Jiangsu region, and Jiangsu is where um, Suzhou is located, and in that region you can use the student card. Outside of it, you cannot. It's not valid. So if you would go to Shanghai, you would not be able to use this student card. So that's just something to be aware of. It's not like you can you can t travel through all of China with this card. The second thing you should know is how to top it up. So I believe you can also top this card up at Family Mart, um, but I've never tried doing this. I always topped up my card at the metro station. So the metro station in Suzhou has these machines. So if you want to buy like the paper tickets, so and not use your student card, um, you can change the language of these machines to English. However, the machine that allows you to top up your student card, the settings of that cannot be changed to English. So you're just going to have to learn how to top it up. Um, maybe ask someone the first time, or bring a friend, or something. But I'm going to show you how to top it up. On the screen you can see like which buttons I am pressing. Put your card in the machine and then you choose how much you want to top up your card and then you pay and then uh, you take out your card again and then it's done. <laughs> So that's all I have to say about taking the bus in China. So before I let you guys go, I would like to tell you a story about me taking the bus. If you saw my Beijing Must video, you would have seen that Julian and I just wanted to eat Peking duck, but we're having the hardest time um, getting to the restaurant because all sorts of things and one of the things that went wrong is that the bus we were in uh, broke down randomly on the street while we were in it and the bus driver managed to fix the bus himself like within a few minutes and I was talking about how surprised I was about how Chinese always solve this problem by themselves and something similar happened to me when I was in the bus in Suzhou once and this was at night well, I'm not sure if it was at night, but it was dark at least. And all of a sudden, all the lights went out and the bus broke down. And 
Like the thing I love about the Chinese is they don't start shouting, they don't start panicking, they everyone just stays calm and just waits for the bus driver to either give instructions or to solve the problem or you know something but they they don't like um make a big fuss out of it they don't mess around they just stay calm and go with the flow so the lights went out and everyone was just you know chilling waiting to see what would happen and i was like this is the first time I was in a bus that broke down randomly on the street. So I was like, well, they're going to have to let us out and take a different bus because that's what would have happened in Europe. But to my surprise, like the bus driver just um, kept doing his thing until finally he restarted the bus. And I just, I just, I really love that. Like the public transportation in China is extremely affordable and extremely um, easy to use and it also gets you from A to B rather quickly. The public transportation in China is also reasonably comfortable unless you take the cheap train um, from Panjin to Suzhou. That's not something we recommend. That took 20 hours and was extremely exhausting um, and not very comfortable at all. <laughs> um, well, besides that, we love the transportation in China. So yeah, I just wanted to tell you that small story before I let you guys go. I've had many people ask me how to take the public transportation, so two weeks ago I explained to you guys how to buy train tickets and this week I explained to you guys how to take the bus in China. I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this video and want to see more videos about China or more videos about travel in general, please subscribe to this channel. I upload every Wednesday. Thank you for watching this week's video and I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys!